Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to OSSI's FFY 2013 IDEA Part B Annual Determinations Overview. I am Dr. Cheryl James, the LEA Manager, and I'm joined today by Education Program Specialist Ms. Megan Williams and Mrs. Annette thacker Bartlett. We hope everyone is having a good day, and we thank you so much for joining us for this Determinations Overview session. You may want to have a copy of your LEA's determinations with you as we go through this presentation because it may help you to clarify the process as well as provide assistance with understanding your LEA's actual determination. Today's agenda is as follows. Making determinations, rubric, calculations, levels, enforcement actions, CAPS, which is corrective action plans. So in other words, we're going to cover all things determinations, the what, why, how, and when. If you have any questions as we go through this presentation, please type your questions in the chat box as this will allow us to respond to your questions via separate emails following the webinar. Additionally, this webinar is being recorded and we will post it at a later date for future reviews. Federal regulations require us to make annual determinations on the performance of LEA's programs for students with disabilities. The following is a list of items that we must consider when doing so. We have to look at the performance on compliance indicators, whether data submitted by the LEAs are valid, reliable, and timely, uncorrected, non-compliance from other sources, and any audit findings. Additionally, we may also consider performance on results indicators as well as other information. OSSI considers the following when making its Part B LEA determinations. The compliance with the annual performance report indicators, information regarding timely, valid, and reliable data, on-site compliance monitoring and dispute resolution findings, subrecipient audit findings, relevant financial data, and compliance with the funding for Public Schools and Public Charter School Amendment Act of 2011, performance on results indicators, and evidence of timely correction of findings of noncompliance. When you received your determinations a little over a week ago, there was an Enclosure One attachment which detailed OSSI's determination rubric that was used to calculate your determination score. And these elements included determination levels and correspondence overall, corresponding overall percentages. There was description of each of the elements, the data source for each element, the available points and scoring, the required enforcement actions based on the determination level that you received, and the appeals process. Regarding the appeals process, LEAs have 30 days from which the date that the determination was sent, which was August 6, 2015, you have 30 days to file an appeal if you believe that a specific element in your determination is inaccurate. Please note that when we do get an appeal that indicates that a review is merited and the result of the review impacts more than one LEA, all LEAs will be notified of the result. Additionally, please keep in mind that the data used for determinations is from two years ago as aligned with the state determinations issued by the U.S. Office of Special Education Programs. Thus, the determinations that you just received is for FFY 2013. So it is for the time period from July 1st, 2013 to June 30th, 2014.
The next few slides are going to review the elements used to calculate your determination score. Element 1, the Annual Performance Report Compliance Indicators for 4B, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. A description of each indicator can be found in the Enclosure 1 rubric. Not all indicators are going to apply to every LEA. For example, Indicator 12, which is C to B transition, would only apply to those LEAs that serve that population of students. Next, there's Element 2, Timely, Valid, and Reliable Data Submissions in which your LEA's Child Count Data Submission was used as the data source. Element 3A, on-site monitoring. LEAs receive up to two points in this, uh, for this element. And in element 3B, dispute resolutions, LEAs receive up to two, two points here as well based on the number of findings that are issued through state complaint or HOD. Each state complaint or HOD, HOD may include multiple findings of noncompliance. LEAs with no complaints filed against them would receive two points. Now elements four, five, and six are all fiscal elements. Element four, uh, subrecipient sub audit reports. Element five, application submissions and reimbursement. And element six, maintenance of efforts. Again, these are all fiscal elements, and if you have any specific questions regarding these elements, please contact Mr. Karen Bowen, and his information is noted here in this slide. Elements 7 and 8. Element 7 is annual performance report results indicators and LEAs can receive up to two points for indicators 3A. Element 8 is correction of noncompliance. LEAs can receive up to two points for timely correction of noncompliance. Now there's also bonus points for correction of longstanding noncompliance. LEAs can receive one bonus point for correcting all student level noncompliance for fiscal years 2009, 10, 11, and 12. Only those LEAs that are open during those years or were open during those years are eligible for this bonus point. Next, we're going to look at calculation and determination levels. This slide represents how your LEA's determination score is actually calculated. You want to divide the total points that your LEA earned from elements 1 through 8 by the total possible points from elements 1 through 8. Your LEA determination level is based on your overall percentage score. There are four determination levels. There's meets requirements, needs assistance, needs intervention, and needs substantial intervention. These are the four determination levels that are determined by the overall percentage score. And your determination level will determine if OSSI must enforce actions. OSEP requires us to apply enforcement actions based on certain determination levels for a given time period. But please keep in mind that as the state education agency OSSI can apply enforcement actions before you reach any of these levels that are noted here. One enforcement action LEA is determined to need assist it is determined to need assistance for two or more consecutive years, then OSSI will ask you to submit a proposed corrective action plan or CAP. Um, you, may also, you may also have to provide a summary report on technical assistance resources that uh, your LEA utilized.
if you get a determination of at a level that needs intervention, the enforcement actions are as follows. Um, a percentage of your LEA's FFY 2014 611 Part B grant awarded to, uh, can be awarded to address areas of noncompliance. Again, the submission of a cap and again, providing a summary report on technical assistance resources that you utilized. Additionally, regarding secondary transition, you received in the determinations email that you got on August 6th, there was information about secondary transition technical assistance. Uh, there was a registration link that was provided Please register for one of the two sessions. There's a session on uh, September 4th uh, from 9 to 11, another session on September 22nd from 9 to 11. And this is for all LEAs that serve students 16 years and older that have not demonstrated compliance around secondary transition. If you have not registered, please do so. Uh, we are committed to improving our secondary transition compliance rates, and we need your help and cooperation to make this happen. So if you serve this population of students and ha you have not demonstrated compliance in this area, you must sign up for one of these sessions. Next steps. If you would like to meet to review Enclosure 1 or your specific LEAs in closure two, or if you need to submit a corrective action plan or progress reports uh, or training reports, please do all of this via your LEA monitor, if applicable. At the end of the presentation, there's a slide noting the contact information for your specific assigned LEA monitor. But please be mindful that assignments are subject to, subject to change but you will be notified of any changes. Remember, if you have questions regarding the fiscal elements, as mentioned earlier, you will be reaching out to Mr. Kieran Bowen, whose information is also on the next slide. And these are your contacts if you have additional questions or um, concerns, need some clarity around the determinations process. Um, again, I'm Dr. Cheryl James. I'm the LEA Supervisory Monitoring Specialist uh, for Fiscal Inquiries. Again, it's Mr. Kieran Bowen. Data Inquiries, Dr. Carmen Roulon. And Technical Assistance, Dr. LaShondra Scroggins. All of these persons are available along with their team members to assist you in any ways necessary. This is the list that I mentioned a moment ago of your assigned LEA monitors for the 2015-2016 school year, and they too are available to assist you with any concerns that you may, may have. And this concludes our presentation on the FFY 2013 IDEA Part B Annual LEA Determinations Overview. Again, we thank you for joining us, and we look forward to our continued partnership with you as we work together to continue improving education for students with disabilities in the District of Columbia. Thank you again. Again, I just want to remind everyone, as I said earlier, this uh, session was being recorded and it will be available for you to review at a later date and we'll definitely let you know when it has been posted and you can go back in and review it again. Thank you.